Aren't you just sick of YouTubers trying to tell you that smart locks are okay and fine to use when really there's a ton of concerns with them that they can be hacked? What happens if they run out of power? What happens if I lose my phone whilst I'm out? What if my insurance company doesn't cover smart locks? What if? What if? What if? And the truth is, no matter what I say, there will always be another person with another what if. But what if there was just one smart lock that nearly ticks every security concern that I have? And if there is such a smart lock, it would be this one. The Acara U200. This is one of Acara's newest devices, and I must say it's one of the most versatile and comprehensive smart locks that I've seen, and certainly the most versatile that I've tested. But then this is only the third smart lock review that I've done, so there is that. But either way, this ticks all of the security concern boxes that the SwitchBot Lock Pro did a few months ago, but there's a few things which this does that goes above and beyond that. But let's start with the setup, which was super straightforward and very similar to the SwitchBot Lock Pro we reviewed a few months back. You have a plate that fits around the key barrel and then three grub screws around the exterior which can be tightened to hold it in place. It's recommended to also use the 3M sticky strips that come with it, but I wanted to test the strength without this and it's actually done a very good job of staying put even without that. Now once this is on, simply slide the key into the door and then the lock goes on top of this. The mechanism inside the U200 is this kind of spring-loaded design that's done to allow any depth of key to be grabbed by the turner, which is a nice touch. So it will just slide over the key and straight onto the plate and then secured by three more screws. Once this is done, slide the battery in, which charges via USB-C, and then pop the front panel on and you're good to go. It then runs through an auto calibration stage, which I wish I'd filmed because when it finishes it, the most bizarre thing happened. The lock has this little beeper on it that goes off when it finishes on locking or locking to signify a change of state. But from this little audio beeps, it decides to full on play the nursery rhyme, Bar Bar Black Sheep. And I'm not joking. Now I know I sound like I've probably lost the plot, but it genuinely did. And I have absolutely no idea why, but you'll just have to take my word for it that I'm not losing my marbles. I tried to get it to do it again by manually calibrating it, but it just didn't do it again, and I haven't heard it do it since. To the point that I'm questioning if I imagined it or not. I mean, next I'll be hearing voices. Did you hear that? Now, along with the internal lock, you also need to set up the external keypad that comes as part of this set, and that's paired to it by default. This requires four AAA batteries to power it, which is slightly odd, given that the internal lock has a rechargeable battery, but either way, putting these in automatically activates it, and you're ready to go. Now, once you've got it up and running, it gives you the obvious core features that you might expect from a smart lock situation. Most obviously, you now have the ability to remotely lock an unlock door through the Akara app. Clicking on unlock will set the lock turning like you're some sort of wizard casting a spell to unlock the door. Now, I love this type of technology that retrofits to analog stuff to make it smart. It really tickles my pickle, so to speak. Now, there may be a few other steps to set this up depending on your personal situation. But from previous smart lock episodes, I already have a lock barrel that will let me have a key in the rear of the door for the U200 to turn, whilst also being able to use a key in the exterior part of the lock to unlock manually if needed. So if your lock doesn't have this, then this is something you're going to need to do. Change your lock barrel for the simple reason that you want to fail safe if the U200 fails or runs out of battery. And that's the first big peace of mind. For those worrying about changing your lock barrel though it's actually really easy and referencing an older episode all you have to do is unscrew the screw on the side of the door slide the old barrel out and replace it with one the same size just with the added security key feature just make sure you get one with the same measurements at either end of the lock. Now, other than the app, we can unlock it via an NFC card, keypad code or fingerprint using the external keypad, which is very nicely designed. But these are all just pretty simplistic control. 
The U200 goes a hell of a lot further, and this is what makes it quite special, because its customizability is possibly the most I've seen from a smart lock that I've tested. For starters, you have the ability to set to hold open latches to keep the door open with its passage mode, which I think is a really nifty feature. And with that said, it has the ability to actually open latches and not just deadbolts, which is a useful addition and adds to the versatility. And then there's versatility when it comes to actually locking too. You've got the ability to manually turn the large dial, which turns the key to lock it. And you've also got the ability to set it so that a slight turn of this lock will set the motor turning by itself, almost a bit like an accessibility feature. But for me, the highlight is the inbuilt gyrometer, which senses when the door has been open and shut. And that way you can set it to lock automatically when the door has been shut. This is a great feature and it means that you don't need any additional sensors to tell whether the door is actually open or shut, which I think is fantastic. And it makes this stand out. I have noticed that on occasion it sometimes locks when the door is still open, as if it's closed, but that's pretty rare. Just something to consider though, that this could be a downside of locking based on the gyrometer readings rather than a magnetic sensor. But hold that thought for a second, I will come back to that, because perhaps the most important feature for its customization is the ability to work with matter. This means that you don't even need an Akara hub or any other Akara device to make it work. It just pairs directly into matter enabled systems like Apple Home or Alexa, which is amazing. This is one of the first instances where I've got a device in my hand and there's no strings attached, full matter support, and Akara deserve a pat on the back for that. Thing is, if you do pair it up with Apple Home, you then have the option of using your iPhone or Apple Watch secure key functionality, which means that they can unlock or lock your door even when those devices run out of power, which is a particularly handy failsafe and adds an additional level of peace of mind. Now, matter support and working directly with other hubs will absolutely appeal to a lot of people. But I'll take a step out of line here and say that actually, with maybe the exception of the Apple key functionality, I'm more likely to use it within the Akara ecosystem using the Akara M3 hub. And that's because firstly, you'll be able to customize everything completely, whereas in these third party systems, the customization and options are minimal compared to within the Akara ecosystem. You'll also be able to issue one-time passwords from the device main screen, which is handy if you've got guests and want to give them temporary access, for example. But also, I'll use it more in the Akara system because I find some of the automation far better than any of the major systems like Alexa. Don't get me wrong, a hell of a lot of my automations in my house run through Alexa, but it's still a long way behind in terms of its device support and routine capabilities. And there's one thing that specifically will make a big difference, and that's the ability to trigger routines based on facial recognition. Now, Akara have already said that geofencing will be coming to this lock soon, so that you can just walk near it and then it will unlock. But I think nothing will be compared to using it with facial recognition that the Akara automations offer you. It means that as soon as an Akara camera recognizes you, such as the G4 doorbell, it will unlock the door. It's not always the fastest and most accurate, and I found the Akara system benefits from good light for the facial recognition system. But when it works, it's rather futuristic. Approach the door and it unlocks. Yeah, I feel it's one step closer to creating the smart home in the future that I envisage in my head that reacts differently to different people. But going back to what I mentioned earlier about the gyrometer sometimes being slightly inaccurate, if you have one of the Akara door and window sensors on the same door that the lock is on, you can create an automation within the app to lock the door when the sensor senses the door has been closed, making it much more accurate. Now, although this has to be one of the most versatile smart locks that I've ever tested, there's a few things I'd point out. The first is that the battery design has a slight flaw in that if I needed to charge the lock, the chances are I'll need to take the battery out to get it near to a wall outlet to charge the battery, meaning I lose all of the smart functionality with the loss of power. There is at least some saving grace here. The USB-C charging port is on the outside of the battery, which means that when you take the locks panel off, it reveals the charging port so that you can charge it when it's in situ, 
if you had something like a power bank or a long enough cable, and therefore still be able to use the remote functionality. And lastly, yes, although it has matter support and can work directly with other hubs and other systems, I'm still at a grievance with the state of matter. Still doesn't perform as advertised, as far as I'm concerned. It's sort of like a ready meal. The picture on the box promises the greatness of an amazing meal, but when you actually get around to eating it, the reality is far from the promise. Pairing is often finicky and temperamental, and there's more ifs and buts with the support for devices than there is watching a politician try and tell us they aren't increasing your tax. Don't get me wrong, it's getting better, and brands like Akara, no, specifically brands like Akara, are really pushing the boat out with their support, and they deserve a big spot in the limelight for that. If anything, I think Akara are basically forging the path when it comes to matter support and how it should be implemented. No extra hubs, no extra faff, just the products and the integration into other systems with no strings attached. And you know, it's warming to the cockles to see this, but we just need everyone else to catch up at this point. But as far as it goes, it's a really decent product and there's not a great deal to fault it for. Much like a lot of Akara tech I have around the house, but we must talk about the price because this is perhaps the biggest lump in the throat for the U200. The price, without discount, is £269. <sighs> now, there may be some discounts available like during the recent Prime Day sales that took it down by quite a bit, so it's always worth checking the link in the description for the current price. But boy, at its RRP, that is expensive. But the consideration we need to make here is that although it's the most expensive smart lock I've ever tested, it's also the most comprehensive, compatible, versatile, certainly that I've ever seen. With its matter support, ability to pair up to devices without a hub, and all the customization options I mentioned earlier, it's easy to see why it's more expensive. Do I wish it was a little bit cheaper? Well, yes, of course. But at that price, I'm content in knowing that there's nothing quite like it with this versatility on the market at the moment, or at least I haven't come across it if it exists. I think for the most part, it sets my concerns completely to one side, and even more so with Apple Key support. Now, even if my devices run out of battery, I can still unlock it without a manual key. But what do you think? Do you think that it's too expensive for a smart lock, or given all of the safety features and technological strides forward, do you think the U200 is worth the asking price. Let us know in the comments below so we can all have a good chinwag about it. And with that, you've just watched yet another episode where a YouTuber has told you it's all fine to use a smart lock. So by now, at least 50% of you are enraged and about to go down to the comments to tell us all that my house is now basically open and someone is going to be rifling through my panty drawers as we speak. And that's fine, you can have that opinion. You're probably wrong, but you can have that opinion. But if you enjoyed today's episode and found it helped to decide if the U200 is for you or not, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe, and I'll see you guys back for another episode of Stu's Reviews soon.